everybody, Alyssa Miller. A year ago at 7.15 a.m. on a Monday morning, I took off from my home airport as a solo student pilot on my way to this little airport about 30 minutes away in a small town called New Holstein. At 12.30 on that same day, I landed back at my airport, having just completed my very first flight officially as a certificated private pilot. It's hard to believe that my check ride was already a year ago. And at the same time, it kind of feels like I've been a pilot forever. So I wanted to make this video to share with you what that first year as a private pilot has been like, some of the awesome experiences that I've been able to have, and some of the cool things that I've accomplished as a pilot. Now, before I get started, I want to address why I'm making this video and why I make the aviation content that I put on this YouTube channel. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I have no desire to be an aviation YouTuber or influencer. I'm not looking for sponsorships, despite the shirt you see me wearing today. No, they've not sponsored this video in any way. That just happens to be a shirt I own. I don't make these videos to get views or to get subscribers or any of that. While it's nice to see that people enjoy the aviation content that I create, You'll also notice that my channel has lots of other content on things like cybersecurity or even barbecue. My goal in creating aviation content is twofold. First, these videos just serve as little keepsakes for me that then I can easily share with my friends and family. Being a private pilot, like for many of us, is a dream come true for me. So it's great to have these little videos that I can look back on and relive those moments or share them in my friend circle or my family circle. Now my second goal, obviously I do share these videos publicly. And when you do that on YouTube, that means they're available to a very broad audience. I do that because I figure since the content is out there, if it can help inspire maybe someone who's thinking about possibly being a pilot or maybe they're you know thinking about new things they could try as a private pilot, if it inspires them, that's wonderful. I also figure maybe you know these videos might bring a little bit of that general aviation to experience to some people who otherwise just wouldn't be exposed to it. So given these two goals, it seems almost natural that I would create a year in review video to commemorate my first year as a private pilot. Now, some of the things that I'll share, you may have seen in other videos that I've created. Yeah, I'll do the YouTube thing and I'll share a link up top so to those other videos when some of those things come up. So if you wanna check them out, great. If not, obviously fine too. But enough of this talk. Let's just get into it. So I said, I completed that first flight. Every, you know, most of us do that. You know, if you have to go to a different airport to meet with your DPE, your first flight is the flight home after you've passed the check ride. But my real first flight was the same that a lot of newly minted private pilots do. I decided I was gonna take my first passenger. After all those hours of training with a CFI in the right seat, and then flying solo for hours and hours and never being able to take anyone with me, I finally had the opportunity. Also, one of my main missions that I wanted to accomplish, that I wanted this private pilot certificate for, was that $100 hamburger run. So, I combined the two. I flew up to Appleton, I picked up my sister, we flew down to Janesville, and had lunch, brunch, whatever you want to call it, at Bessie's Diner. We both ordered the $100 hamburger. Literally, that's what's on the menu. So these types of trips were absolutely one of the key things I wanted to do with my private pilot license certificate, rather, and being able to do that on my very first flight was awesome. It probably also doesn't come as much of a surprise then that I pretty quickly started exploring other locations to go for that infamous $100 hamburger run. Now, a lot of times it was brunch or dinner or something else, 
But I checked out a lot of different places. I went down to the Rochelle Airport where they've got a really cool skydiving operation, but they also have this great little bar and grill called the Flight Deck. I've been to Madison a number of times, and in their FBO, they've got a, a great restaurant called uh, the Jet Room. And then I even started to explore off the field. I'd fly into Madison, grab a crew car, and, and go into town and, and get barbecue at Mission Barbecue or whatever, just for the sake of you know flying out to have food somewhere. Um, I found some other favorite restaurants as well. In La Crosse, there's Takira Pato Azul, which is my favorite place for tacos. If you're ever looking for good tacos, check out La Crosse. It's right there in downtown. You get a crew car at the airport, five, 10 minute drive and you're there. Uh, Cheesecake Heaven in Green Bay is another one that I love. It's a great brunch place. It's a great lunch place. Uh, just awesome food and you're right under the shadows of Lambeau Field. And so quite often now it's become a case where just on a whim I decide, hey, you know what? Let's go have dinner in Green Bay or in La Crosse or Madison or wherever. And being fortunate enough to have my own plane, that's something I've been able to do, I can't even count how many times. Very early on in my private pilot career, I also made my very first landing at Milwaukee's General Mitchell International Airport. It's the biggest and busiest airport in the state of Wisconsin. It was an opportunity for me to prove to myself that I was capable of getting in and out of larger towered airports since I had trained at a non-towered airport. So I never really had a lot of opportunity to work with air traffic control. This was also kind of one of the missions that I had sort of envisioned I'd be able to do when I got my private pilot certificate was to be able to fly down to Milwaukee when I had to fly out on a commercial flight and then fly home from Milwaukee back to my house in my own plane. But one of the coolest experiences I had flying into Milwaukee was when I flew down on one of those nights where we had just this gigantic moon, right? It's one of those where the moon was low in the sky and it was huge. And there was a photographer that was out in his backyard taking pictures of the moon. And he just happened to be there at just the right time to capture this incredible image of my airplane passing in front of the moon. Well, he ended up finding me through a Facebook pilots group and said, hey, does anybody know who this pilot is? And I saw the picture and the time and whatnot. I said, I think that might be me. Well, it also turns out that he works for a local television station as one of their cameramen. And so they, of course, took the opportunity to do a whole story on it about how he captured this photo being in just the right place at the right time, how he connected with me through Facebook. And, you know, ultimately we met up and he, he was able to share these pictures with me. They even came down to Milwaukee and did a uh, interview with me at the airport. What a just completely wild and lucky moment for the both of us. And I've gotten other cool moments. Of course, flying into Milwaukee, I get to see the air refueling wing there. So I've taken off behind their KC-130s. Um, and of course, just sharing the runways and taxiways with the big airline planes, right? You see the 757s, the 737s and such there as well. Just super cool experiences flying into General Mitchell International Airport. So one of the other missions that I envisioned in getting my private pilot certificate was being able to take those short overnight or weekend trips. I got to take my first overnight trip to go visit my sister when she was out in La Crosse. So I flew out, spent the night with her. It was the first time I'd ever parked my aircraft on a different airport's ramp overnight. And we did some hiking and of course eating good food and stuff. Uh, so that was my first overnight trip, but it certainly wasn't my last. Later on, I flew down to Kansas City to go visit some friends. So that was the longest trip I had been on at that point. I mean, we were talking three and a half hours. That's almost as far as I can go without having to refuel. So I spent a few days in Kansas City after flying into the downtown Wheeler Airport, which is literally, as the name would suggest, right in the middle of downtown Kansas City. 
And then after a few days in Kansas City, I flew over to Southern Illinois, just over the border from St. Louis, to spend another day with another friend there before finally coming home. So that was like four days worth of travel using my little plane. But then in September, I got to take my longest trip, which was back to Kansas City to go see some friends and also to be there for work for a few days. But then I had to go to Raleigh-Durham to speak at a conference. Now that's too long of a trip to make in my plane without refueling. So I also landed in Nashville, saw a couple friends in Nashville before then taking off again and making the trip to Raleigh. Now getting out of Raleigh was interesting because this was also that point back in September when they were getting that tropical storm and it was just about to hit. So I had to scramble to kind of get out of there before the weather got too crazy and my plane was gonna be stranded on the ramp at Raleigh-Durham Airport. So I flew back to Nashville, then back home from there. One other trip that was super cool was each year I do a spa trip with a few of my friends. We go up to a spa resort in the Dells, we stay there for a few nights, rent a villa, and just have a wonderful time. So one of those friends is one of my friends from Kansas City. She flew into Milwaukee, so I flew down to Mitchell International, picked her up in my plane, flew her back to my house where we spent the night, then we flew out in my plane out to the Dells for our spa week and we met our other friend there, and we had our spa week and we flew back, I flew her back down to Milwaukee to drop her off so she could catch her commercial flight back home. These kinds of trips are super cool. Like these are the things I was really looking forward to doing with my private pilot certificate. Now, one of the other things I started to do with my private pilot certificate to build my skills is I'm going for my instrument rating. So I started flying with a friend as safety pilot. You see, we were both working on our instrument ratings. And so every time we would go flying, we would split the time with one of us being safety pilot, the other under the hood, and then vice versa. But we didn't want to just fly to the same places all the time. So we started checking out all sorts of different airports. We flew to Iowa. We flew to airports in Illinois. We went everywhere we could think of. And we got to explore lots of cool new places. Two that stand out in particular to me. One was uh, Sky Harbor Duluth Airport. Now this is a little single runway airport on this little stretch of land on the shores of Lake Superior. And in fact, when you're landing on this runway, it looks almost like you're landing on an aircraft carrier. It, it's really crazy. And so we landed there, we got out, we went and checked out the beach because just over the hill from the airport was a, a little beach that was right on Lake Superior. It was such a cool experience to make it up there. Another time we did what I call island hopping. We went up and we landed at a couple of those little islands that are between Upper and Lower Michigan. So Beaver Island and Mackinac Island. We landed at Mackinac, we actually went and explored the island for a little bit. We got some fudge, we walked around the island, and then we flew back. It was a really, really neat experience. And of course, it was great because at the same time, we were building up those simulated instrument hours that we both needed for our instrument ratings. So I gained a lot of experience as a pilot doing that. There are a lot of things that I've been able to tackle as a private pilot because of the amount of flying that I've done. And so I've gotten into a lot of cool areas to expand my piloting skills. So let's talk about some of the things that I did to build my pilot skills. It started with learning other aircraft. Right after I got my private pilot certificate, my plane had to go in for annuals, so I needed to be able to rent other aircraft if I wanted to keep flying and stay fresh. So I went to one of the other nearby airports and I got checked out in their Piper Warrior. Yeah, very similar to my aircraft, but it had lots of upgraded avionics that were very similar to the package I was hoping to put in my aircraft later on down the road. So I got to practice with you know, a, a full on GPS and some other things, even flying with my safety pilot on some of those flights so that we could shoot approaches and so forth. I also worked with my CFI to get my complex endorsement. 
I rented the Piper Aero that they have at my local airport, which is a complex aircraft because it has retractable gear and a constant speed propeller. So we did the 10 hours of flight that I needed to get signed off there. I got that logbook endorsement, and that's another aircraft that I've been able to rent multiple times. Some other things that I've done that were really cool. Anyone that lives in Wisconsin knows that trying to get to points south of Chicago can be kind of a pain if you're coming out of southeastern Wisconsin because you got that big class Bravo 4 O'Hare in the way. So one of the ways around that is the flyway that goes along the lake shore underneath that Class Bravo airspace. It's so cool because you're flying at these low altitudes. At some points, you're lower than the top of the Willis Tower, and you're right there just offshore from the city. It's one of the most scenic flights you can do. And so now I've been able to do that multiple times. But I also wanted to challenge myself with bigger airports. And so to celebrate my 200th hour logged as a pilot, I decided to go have dinner with my sister in Minneapolis. But I didn't just land at any airport in Minneapolis. That's right. I landed at the Minneapolis International, KMSP, the big class Bravo airport. And what a learning experience that was. It was great affirmation to prove that I could handle it. Air traffic control was super cool. I called them ahead of time and they're like, yeah, sure, come on in whenever you want. And so it was great. I got to learn lots of new things, including, and you might wanna go look this one up, I got to learn about ground metering. That was something I had never heard of before. But it came in handy later because then, for my birthday, I was going down to Chicago to meet some friends in Rosemont for a birthday dinner and I decided, what the heck, let me see if they'll let me fly into Chicago O'Hare because it's right across the freeway from Rosemont. And you know what? I did exactly that. I called ahead, I set everything up, I coordinated with them, and on a Saturday morning, I flew my little Cherokee into Chicago O'Hare International, the fourth busiest airport in the entire world. It was a crazy great experience. Everything went smoothly. I did a tower tour and air traffic control said they were happy to have me. They were actually very happy with the level of uh, preparation that I had done, of course. But such a wonderful experience to be able to do that, affirming for me to prove that I had the skills necessary to get into such a large and complex airport and get back out without any incident or trouble. You'd think maybe ATC would be a little annoyed by having me there. Quite the opposite. They told me they loved it. They were super excited because I came prepared. So lots of cool experiences. I mean, being able to write K-O-R-D in my logbook, that was pretty awesome. And what a great memory I'll have. Probably never repeat it because it's a pretty expensive place to land. And so all of these skills wouldn't have happened though if it weren't for me finding those friends in the aviation community. Making friends in the aviation community has proven to be an invaluable tool for becoming a better pilot. I mentioned that Facebook group before where the photographer found me and I'm actually a member of a number of Facebook groups that have been super helpful in my development as a private pilot. Even more helpful has been the Midlife Pilot Podcast's Discord community. I've made a ton of new friends through that community, and some of us have even been able to meet up at different airports or to go out for brunch and whatnot. I even mentioned when I flew into Nashville that I met up with some friends. Yeah, two of those people were from that group. Then there's the traditional uh, aviation groups like the EAA. I've been to countless events with our local chapter and I'm a member of that chapter. I'm also starting to check out the 99s. I've been to one event and I'm gonna go to another and probably join that chapter too. And then of course, just the friends that you make who are other pilots or people around the airport and getting to know them, hear about their experiences and get advice from them once in a while has been very valuable. But other friendships I've also been able to foster are my non-aviation friendships. People who live in neighboring states that I don't get to see very often, but because I now have my private pilot certificate, I can say, hey, friend that lives in the Chicago area, I'm gonna be flying down to DePage, wanna go have dinner? Or to my friend in Indiana, hey, what if I come see you this weekend? We haven't hung out in a while. These are things I, 
I get to do now that I wasn't able to do before. And I've done quite a few of those flights this last year having my private pilot certificate. Going beyond that though, what's even been more exciting is getting to share aviation with other people. Take people up for flights in my plane, people who might otherwise have never gotten to experience general aviation and show them why it is that I'm so passionate about this. One flight that I remember really well where I got to share aviation with somebody else was when I took my neighbor and her daughter up for a sightseeing flight around our little town. I love hanging out with my neighbor. She's a lot of fun. We've become really good friends. And so it was really neat to be able to take her flying. But even better was her daughter, who I knew was really excited by airplanes. And so being able to take her up and fly her around her hometown, fly over her house and do some circles, and then landing at night with all the lights on the runway shining back at us, just such a cool experience for that young child to be able to see this is what aviation can be. Now, another case that I remember quite well of sharing aviation with someone who might not otherwise get to is a friend of mine who lives up in Green Bay. I was able to take her and her husband flying and just, again, nice little scenic tour, but I just remember her excitement, especially when I let her take the controls of the airplane and fly it for a few minutes. Now, like a lot of people, she got pretty nervous pretty fast and I tried to relax her, but she had so much fun with it, even if she was nervous. And she couldn't stop talking about it when she got on the ground and seeing that excitement in people's eyes, seeing how much they love that is just so cool. Um, Another one, I, I took a friend and her husband up for his birthday. The way she put it, how do you get, what, what gift do you get for somebody who has everything was how she put it. And so she knew her husband loved aviation and so she wanted to take him for a flight. So she asked me if you know, we, we could go sometime when I was gonna you know, be out flying anyway. I said, yeah, sure, let's go. So we set up a date. I knew I was going to be just going up to do some flying anyway. So we did a, a little scenic tour around Milwaukee. Um, first time that I had ever done that through the Milwaukee airspace, uh, coordinated it with the tower and we just, we had a, a wonderful trip and he too, when we got out, he was so giddy. It was great. He just had this wonderful experience. Um, you know, I've also been able to take my sons and, and their girlfriends up flying with me as well so that they've been able to experience that. It's just, it, it's such a wonderful thing. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, I, I certainly enjoy flying alone, but every day is better when I can fly with someone else. It's just so exciting to share that gift of aviation with people. So that's one of the benefits of having my own plane. But having that privilege of not only being a pilot, but also having my own aircraft that I can fly pretty much any time I want is being able to actually do some things to give back, to do good for the community. Public benefit flying is something else that I'm really getting into. My friend, the Badger pilot, gave me my first taste of it when he took me on a pilots and paws mission with him. We picked up two dogs that had come from a rescue in Texas and took them to a shelter in Wisconsin that was gonna find them new homes. So right after that, I signed up and my friend, the safe, who safety pilots with me, and I, we flew and we rescued eight more dogs and took them to that shelter in Wisconsin. I'm also signed up with two other organizations that uh, help humans, uh, those that need medical care or things like that. And so that's a way for me just to be able to use my privilege as a private pilot and a plane owner to give back and create some, some light in other people's lives. I've also been able to fly a number of EAA Young Eagles missions, taking young kids, I think up through age 17, if I remember right, up in the plane, for some of them, it's their first experience. Some of them, they've been up before, but for all of them, it's always an exciting experience to be able to go flying and see the world from up above. I also helped out at a Girls Can Fly event where women in aviation and a number of other groups sponsored this event. They brought in Blackhawks from the, uh, from the National Guard, 
Uh, there was a TBM that landed there as well, a bunch of other aircraft, so that these young girls could see other women pilots flying these amazing aircraft and know that they can do it too. I love being able to use the privileges that I have to give back to some others. Now, speaking of privileges, and in this case, we'll talk about how they're defined in the regulations. There's those privileges of a private pilot that allow you to do maintenance on your own aircraft. So that's something that in my first year I've really gotten into. Um, I sat with my AMP when he did an oil change on my aircraft and he taught me how to do it. So now I change the oil on my airplane myself. I'm also able to do some of the other little preventive maintenance items that are listed in that Appendix A in the FARS, right? And so, um, you know, things like repairing little cosmetic things inside the cabin or lubricating different items, things like that. And so, honestly, that's been really cool because it's been an opportunity for me to learn about how my aircraft functions. And that comes in handy when things go wrong. I recently had an emergency landing in DuPage. And yeah, it was expensive and yeah, it wasn't something that I could repair. But in the moment when things were going wrong, having the understandings of the aircraft and some of the inner workings really was helpful in how we made it back safely. So these are really cool things that I get to do and it helps a bit too with the cost because you know what, there's a lot of maintenance to do when you fly a lot. So just how much is a lot you ask? Well, let's talk about this. So first of all, let me tell a little story about this book because this is another important part of my first year as a private pilot. Back in December of 2021, when I was first debating the idea of maybe trying to become a pilot. I went to brunch with a friend of mine who was a former flight attendant for United Airlines. And at that brunch, she gave me this logbook as an early Christmas present. She handed it to me and she said, there, now you have no choice, you have to do it. And that was motivation for me throughout some of those more trying days uh, as I was training for my private pilot certificate. But I bring this up because when I talk about having flown a lot, in this first year, I've filled this book. Now, granted, it's a little more than a year because it has all my training in here. This book, the very first pages of this book, is my discovery flight. I can go back to April of 2022, my first discovery flight is in here, all the way through to just a little over a week ago. Now what's really incredible to me about this, as I pull up this page, is it was two days before Thanksgiving this year that I logged the very last line in this logbook. Now what's crazy about that is that flight was my 400th hour of total time in this logbook. So what does that mean in terms of my first year? Well, I had to start another logbook first of all, so we're, we're into that now. I have a total pilot time of 406 hours. Now 88 of that was training leading up to my check ride, so in the one year since passing my check ride, I have 318 hours as a private pilot. That to me is dumbfounding. I, I can't believe how lucky and fortunate I am to have been able to do that. Maybe that explains why I, this long list of experiences and accomplishments is a part of this video. But let, let's talk about some of the things that I've done there really quick. So. Of that, 406, 362 is pilot and command time. 236 of that is cross country time. Um, I've got 37 hours of simulated instruments, so I still got a little ways to go before I'm gonna be ready for my instrument check ride. Night flying is something that I think I've done more than it seems a lot of pilots have. I've got 44.4 hours of night flying. And honestly, a lot of that is just a result of flying with that safety pilot. 
most of the time I was flying out to another airport to pick her up before we'd even go flying. Then we'd go flying for a couple hours, we'd come back and I still had to fly home. So yeah, night currency and night proficiency haven't been too much of an issue for me. Let's talk about some of the other things I've been able to do. I've landed at 62 different airports. 45 of those are in Wisconsin. Now, for those of you that fly in Wisconsin, you know about the Wisconsin Passport Program. And unfortunately, I continue to forget to get the stamps at different airports. So I don't know how many I have stamps for, but I've landed at 45 of them. Outside of Wisconsin, another 17. So you, that gives you some idea of what I've been able to do, but all of these orange airports that you see on here, those are airports that I want to land at someday. So I've got lots to go. I've got that instrument rating to tackle. I've got lots more exploring to do. So many different you know, experiences and things that I can't even think of right now that I, you know, will happen in the moment. But this is the magic of general aviation. And this is why I wanted to share this. Again, so that I can keep this as a keepsake, so that I can share it with you. I hope maybe it's been an inspiration for some of you to see what is possible, what you can do. Maybe I gave some of you new ideas, things you can try with your own pilot certificate. Maybe some of you have gotten encouragement to, to take the dive and try to get your pilot certificate. Whatever it is, I hope you enjoyed the video, even if it was just kind of fun to, to watch some of these recaps. Thank you so much for checking it out, and we'll see you guys again real soon.